through Mike Jackson here tonight. A lot of us want to do things, but we never get there. You know, he got there. Vicky Gone! That was the best I ever felt for any of my fights. I felt amazing. I felt untouchable. Oh, early knockdown for Mickey Gall. Right on the butt. Hello. <laughs> Always a tough crowd. <laughs> well, Punk, uh, this, of course, was not the result that you had hoped for, but you talked uh, all along about this was about the journey as well. So now that it's, it's, it's over, at least for the moment, uh, didn't come up your way. H how are you feeling about the whole process right now? The process was magical. You know, I'm just disappointed. I'm, I'm beating myself up way more than, uh, than I got beat up. You know, I'm, I'm supremely disappointed, but... You know, the answer to your question is, uh, aside from the outcome, wouldn't change anything for the world. It was uh, just being out there under the lights, most fun I've ever had. And to say it again, second best day of my life. First one was my wife when I married her. Thank you. Would you have done anything differently in your uh, strategic approach? Yeah, I would have thrown the, the right hand um, faster. I think I was a little late throwing the two, and then I got taken down. You, you did come out incredibly aggressive. How did that match up with the plan? Was the intention to, to, to rush forward that way? Yeah, you know, I, watching what little tape there is on Mickey, I, I think uh, nobody pressured him, you know what I mean? Um, and, and once he got in a rhythm, especially in that first pro fight he had, uh, because the one with Mike Jackson was, was so short, but his, his, the, first, the first pro fight, it's, uh, the guy was just moving backwards. The plan was to just move forward, you know? I was... Uh, I was either going to come back with my shield or on it, and I think that's the that's the game I played. And just last for me, you, you said at the end that this is not the end of the journey that you want to keep going. Do you intend to do that at the UFC level, or would you be willing to say, you know, maybe do it at a lower level so that you could continue to develop your skills, not at the highest level of the sport? My initial. Uh, venture into this was going to be at the lowest level you know um this opportunity just got presented to myself i would have been a fool to say no uh i i, I don't know what happens for you know from here on out you know and I, I, what if i get cut i don't know you know you know what i mean um i i think that's a possibility uh do i want that to happen no uh, but who's to say where i go from here i don't know i, I definitely want to keep going you know i I'm the kind of guy, you know. I just, I just fell off a bike, you know. I'm not, I'm not just going to shelve it and leave it in the middle of the street. I got to get back on the ride. And you said you definitely wanted to get back into the cage. 
uh, again. How long do you think it's going to be before we see you back in the cage? Do you want to take some time off to train? Do you want to get back in there quickly? Uh, hard question to answer right now. You know, the, uh, obviously, it's the same night I just lost. Uh, I'd love to jump back in there as quickly as I can and erase that, but uh, you know I got to go back to the drawing board. Um, I sort of look like the elephant man right now, so I think. Uh, and the, the 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 plan was to always you know take some time. Um, my wife's put up with a lot through this process, and you know instead of her cooking meals for me and stuff like that, I I got to cook some stuff for her. And you're a student of the sport. Well, what did you take away from that that you need to go back and learn, work on? Uh, just timing, you know. Um, I, I, I got no excuses for what happened. Uh, he's just, Mickey was the better man. And uh, a big talking point all week was what music you would walk out to, and you stuck with the song. Yeah. What was the decision there? It's an awesome, awesome song. Don't you like it? I love it. What don't you like about Living Color? What's wrong with you? No, I love the song. Oh, you love it. Okay. All right. And uh, last, you seem to take a, a moment before you entered the cage to soak in the moment. Like, what did you... Uh, I guess gather from that moment. Well, uh, you know, I don't know if it's ever going to happen again. I didn't know at that time. You know, um, I, I, I fully believed in myself. I know my coaches believed in me. My team believed in me. Uh, I thought I was going to win. You know, I, I, so but but even even then, I, I still wanted to. You know, the scoreboard could have fallen on me. I, I've referenced that like three separate times this week. I don't know what's going to happen to me. I get hit by a bus. I could die eating pizza tonight. I, I don't know. So I, I just try to enjoy life, you know, even the bad stuff. This is the bad stuff, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm still, it sounds crazy. I'm still happy. I still love it. You know, one thing that I think a lot of, you know, people said and, and media members said, and you may have even said this at one point, is that you would feel pretty comfortable. If there was one advantage you might have over Mickey is that you were used to the spotlight and perhaps he wasn't. Did that turn out to be the case, or when you got out there, since this is so different and it, it's, it's just different in meaning to you as well, how were your emotions, you know, right before the f fight started? They were they're steady as a rock. You know, I was I was warmed up, I was ready to go. Um, I, you know, butterflies because I'm about to, you know, throw hands, but uh, I wasn't nervous, so to speak. Yeah, I, I felt fine. Another thing was like, if, if we'll see him punk it out there and, and you know embarrass himself, well, he looked terrible. And you know, I would I would think a lot of people would call this a lopsided loss. But are you are you proud of you know what you put out there tonight? I, I don't think I, th there's there's probably an alternate reality where I win and I'm still disappointed in myself. Uh, that's just that's just who I am. You know, uh, I'm I'm just really really hard on myself. I you know, I lost. And it sucks, and it was lopsided, and it's upsetting. But you know, I I know I'm better than that. <clears throat> Punk to your to your left. I am curious. Uh, your wife was, you know, very uh, you know cautious about you know watching you train, being here tonight. W what did you say to her? What did she say to you after the fight? Oh, you guys are all gonna make me cry, <laughs> you bastards. <laughs> um. Uh, she just said she was proud of me, you know? You know, you, you, you said throughout this entire process this was about living a dream, and it didn't go your way tonight, but you still said you, you it was a night of your life. I mean, I know the answer is no regrets, but, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, did you get out of this, you know, outside of the win, did you still get out of this what you wanted on the day you signed December 2014? No, I didn't win. <laughs> you know, that that's that's what I wanted. I wanted to win. I wanted to perform, you know? didn't happen what did your your coaches say to you afterwards i know you know you walked by i think i not to not to misquote you but i think when i saw you walk by media row you said damn it that was kind of like the you know just that, that feeling what did duke and what did the guy say to you in the back same thing you know they said they were proud of me and i just feel like i let them down last question i know you said you're not you're not going to decide tonight when you're going to return how quickly are you going to get back in the gym, though? How quickly do you want to be back in the training to get better? Well, I think they're going to force me to stay out because I have this uh, this ear and I got a couple stitches in my eye. But you know, I'd 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 be back in there Monday if it was up to me. A couple more guys. Uh, back here. Um, 
I know you're kind of guarded kind of coming into this fight as to what you were going to do. You didn't really show your hand too much, but is there a regret, I guess, that you didn't get to show more of what you learned in the last month or a year and a half of training with Duke and everything, that you didn't get to de uh, demonstrate your skills a little more? No, because I... I you know who would I who would I have been demonstrating those skills for? You know, I think the people who believe in me knew what uh, I was good at, and then the the people who were negative were going to be negative no matter what. You uh, touched on it, but there was a smile on your face while you're walking to the, the octagon that we hadn't seen before. I mean, this was really the culmination of everything. What were you feeling when you hear that familiar music, but it's something else? I mean, what what was going through your mind? Yeah, you know, like a, the the switch got flipped. Um, I was happy. You know, I I I didn't really think how the crowd would react. You know, but uh, they showed me love, and that you know that you you can't help but smile at that. You know, and it, and it felt good, and I felt where uh, I felt like I was, you know, in a way back where I belong. I was happy. Uh, it felt right. It felt good. I was I was ready to fight. Back here. Uh, what, what did you say to Mickey afterwards before they, you know, read the the official, you know, finish? It seemed like you guys were talking. Did you say anything to him? Yeah. Um, throughout, you know, like in interviews and stuff like that, he would say things like, uh, you know, I don't, I didn't, that he, speaking about himself, saying he didn't belong in the UFC and, you know, he he didn't uh, he didn't belong on the main card, and I, I told him. You know, everyone else is going to say that about you throughout your entire career. Why, why are you going to say that about yourself? I said, don't ever, don't ever put yourself down. You know, uh, even if you think you don't deserve to be on the main card, you're on the main card. Just shut the fuck up and fake it till you make it. You know what I mean? Like, don't, don't sell yourself short. You know what I mean? And just two other ones. Um did anyone from the UFC come up to you afterwards, Dana White, any of the, the owners, and give you any kind of indication about what they thought of the fight and what your future in the company is? No, I haven't talked to Dana yet. I mean, I could imagine what... I, I mean, I, I talked to a couple people, you know, and they just shook my hand, said, hold your head up, be proud of yourself. But I, 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 <laughs> it's not like I, I fought a good fight, so, you know. And uh, lastly, you've been very sort of stoic throughout this entire process. Um, and of course, you know, you're emotional and I know you're disappointed in the loss. Are the emotions specifically tied to the loss or is this maybe some of the emotions of the last 21 months and the ups and downs and everything that you had to go through to get to this point? Is it all sort of coming out at this moment? Yeah, I think it's all coming out, you know. Uh, I mean, I had back surgery for this, you know. Um, and I think uh, I'm super happy that you know that's something that didn't bother me at all once once i got it fixed i was like a different person you know so like i i'm i'm, I'm fortunate for that and i'm thankful for that but i just think uh you know even to come back from that even the you know you, you know it's like it, people can say it didn't belong here and they said I wasn't going to make it to the octagon, and they said I wasn't going to make it after the back surgery and then it was I wasn't going to make weight and uh, you know i uh, I'm just, I'm happy I did it, you know. Uh, but, yeah, there's there's a lot of emotion involved, sure. Thank you, Phil. You're done. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate you all, guys. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Just a couple of quick notes for you. Jessica Andrade is next. The attendance for tonight, 18,785, a sellout, 18,785 for a live gate of 2.6 million, 2.6 million. And then $50,000 bonuses tonight, fight of the night, Alistair Overeem and Stipe Miocic. And our performance bonus is Jessica Andrade and Yancy Maderos. We'll bring out Jessica here in just a few moments.
John, you start us off? Sure. First of all, congratulations on the victory tonight. Uh, obviously, an incredible performance from you. A lot of people thought this was going to be a very difficult fight. Did you envision a scenario where you could get it done so quickly and so impressively? Meus parabéns pela vitória. Você viu, assim, antes da luta que poderia ser desse jeito, uma vitória tão rápida e fácil. É, boa noite. Eu acho assim que eu treinei bastante, né, para ir para trocação com ela. Aí acabou que no meio da luta ali eu mudei a estratégia, fui para o chão, mas eu já sabia que ela não tinha tanto chão, que ela não era tão boa nessa parte, e eu venho treinando muito, participando de todos os campeonatos de jiu-jitsu, graças ao Mestre Paraná, meu, meu manager, e tem sido grandes resultados, tenho vencido tudo, e pô, foi muito bom ganhar rápido de novo. <risos> Yeah, it was awesome to get the, the quick win. Uh, honestly, the plan wasn't really to take it to the ground. Uh, the plan was to stand and bang with her. But once she saw the reach difference, she was like, okay, and that's, there's an easy way out of this. So she just took her down and did her work. You know, she's been competing a lot in, in Gi back home, and her coach has been working a lot on, on getting her grappling up to par. You know, she got her, black, her uh, purple belt recently, so things are moving along, and she's getting more and more complete. And despite the fact that you've only been in the division for a short time, your performances have been so incredible that people are already saying title shot. Um, do you feel you're ready for a title shot? And if so, how do you feel you match up with the champ? É, você está muito pouco tempo na divisão, mas com duas performances dessas já tem gente falando que você pode lutar pelo cinturão. É, você acha que você está pronta, que é uma coisa que já pode vir agora? E como que você acha que você casa com, com a campeã? E de repente fala em duas partes. Hein, Roger? Bom, é... Eu estou indo muito bem nessa nova categoria, né? Estou muito feliz. Tenho baixado o peso muito bem, muito fácil. Acho que diferente de muitas meninas que estão nessa categoria. Mas é, sempre estou pronta para tudo que vier, né? Se o UFC achar que está na hora de disputar o cinturão, eu vou disputar. E eu tenho certeza que o meu jogo casa muito bem com o jogo da Joana. Vai ser uma grande luta e, uma, quem sabe, uma grande performance também de novo da noite. Yeah, I, I think my game um, matches very well with Joanna, and we can make a, a very good fight. Hopefully, get another performance there. And uh, the thing is, the weight cut for the division was so easy, compared, even compared to the weight cut to 135 at some points. And she just feels like this is the place to be. She feels stronger than all the other girls, and and all the the 20 pounds that she had to lose. Uh, don't really make a difference, you know, it was nothing that really uh, was doing anything there, so it's all good. Jessica, Samantha, oi, tudo bem? Tudo, já. Parabéns pela vitória, pela performance da noite. É, você foi a primeira brasileira a ganhar, a, a entrar no octógono, né, de verdade. E o que, que você acha que a sua, as suas vitórias, a sua, a sua performance acrescenta para as mulheres no jiu-jitsu? O que, que isso representa para as mulheres no jiu-jitsu no Brasil também? So, this is how I was flying. So, uh, she said that uh, Jessica was the first uh, woman uh, from Brazil to actually fight in the UFC, and what this win uh, represents for women in Jiu Jitsu back home. Bom, acho que é, eu como mulher, né, sendo a primeira brasileira a pisar no octógono, a Amanda Nunes, né, a primeira contratada e já está com o cinturão, acho que a gente tem feito um grande papel né, para o Brasil e representando muito bem as mulheres e mostrando que nós não somos só rostinhos bonitos ou somos apenas mulheres simples, não. Nós somos guerreiras, a gente é, acredita, a gente confia e a gente vai à luta. Então, acho que a gente... Acho que essa parte do jiu-jitsu vai trazer muito mais meninos aí que são da área do chão, né? Para o MMA e tenho certeza que vão sair muito bem. I think that uh, for sure I, I was the first one to fight in the UFC. Amanda was the first one to sign, and she already has a belt there. So I think we're uh, doing a great work and, and getting a lot of exposure back home. And hopefully we're going to be uh, inspiring a lot more girls to, to go from jiu-jitsu to MMA or even start with jiu-jitsu and you know, just get the word out there about uh, female uh, martial arts. Um, during your fight, it was posted on social media that this is your ninth UFC fight, and you have um, more fights than any other, f more UFC fights than any other female in the company. Uh, I just want to know what your thoughts are on that, and, and where you see yourself in this new division, and um, as a company as a whole. 
é, foi postado em mídias sociais durante a sua luta, que essa é a sua nona luta no UFC e que você é a minha com mais lutas dentro do UFC. É, onde você se vê dentro da divisão nova e o que, que isso representa para você? É, eu acho que eu consegui né, bater esse, mais esse marco né, no, no UFC. Eu venho fazendo alguns recordes, algumas coisas diferentes no UFC. Né? A primeira brasileira a pisar no octógono. É a primeira a dar mais golpes de em um round, a segunda em dois em três rounds. Então, acho que tem feito muita diferença, né? E estou conseguindo mostrar né, esse meu jogo no MMA e está sendo muito bom. E eu acho que agora nessa nova categoria eu posso estar entre as, as top 5 aí e quem sabe se tornar a próxima campeã do, do UFC. Yeah, I think, you know, I have everything in my hands to be one of the top five in the division, who, who knows, maybe even a champion. Uh, I was able to do a lot uh, in this time in the UFC. I was able to get like a, one of the uh, biggest uh, significant strikes in a round for the UFC, one of the biggest significant strikes in a, a third round fight. Uh, she was the first one to to fight for the UFC uh, from Brazil. So, you know, things are, are going pretty well and hopefully she gets to the 10th very quickly. Mickey, this has uh, been an interesting journey for you, to say the least. Uh, now that it's behind you, talk about the feeling and the emotion, how you're feeling at this moment. I feel great, man. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a long time coming. Um, man, the past three weeks dragged. Like, you know, it was, it was six months I knew this fight was going to happen. You know what I mean? So I'm happy to be through it. Uh, I'm, I'm so, super grateful for the opportunity, and I'm ready for, you know, the UFC killers now. That's what I want. I want war with the best guys in the world. You certainly seem to have supreme confidence all the way along, but there was this kind of, I don't know, a fear of the unknown, I guess, with CM Punk. What, what, what if he was a killer behind closed doors and you just didn't know about it? I mean, was there ever any moment along this time where you had a little bit of doubt to think, you know, maybe this, maybe this guy is going to turn out to be way more than I thought? Yeah, it, there's a possibility. It could have been all that training. He's, an act, he's a phenomenal actor. It could have been acting. Um, You know, I knew my my kill stuff was going to be more than his kill stuff. I know two year guys. I know, you know, I I I, I beat up ten year guys. Been doing it since I was you know teenager. Uh, so I, I knew you know I, I knew what to expect. I knew I'd be able to dominate in any. I wanted to, to work my stand up. I was re I really focused on my stand up. I wanted to show that off. I was working with uh, Sean Diggs, uh, but he came in hot, so I just changed levels and. Put him on his back. You talked about wanting to fight the killers of the USC. You called out Sage Northcutt. Yeah. People seem to be divided on whether he is one of those killers. Do you think he is one of those killers of the USC, and why was that the target? What's his USC record? Do you know? Anyone know? It's a good record. Uh, yeah, he's a tough kid. I think I just I think that fight makes sense in a lot of ways, especially right now. Both Dana White looking for a fight, guys, young guns. Um, both of us have questions about us, so let's bang out. Let's do it. Mickey, uh, over here to your left. Hey, um, <laughs> I know uh, in the lead up to the fight, you were very respectful. I am kind of curious, what was your reaction when you put out your hand yesterday and, and he refused to shake it at the weigh-ins? Um, well, I, it's funny. I just My sister just told me that he said I was stuttering um, <laughs> when I was talking to him. I'll tell you exactly what I said. I said, When he didn't shake my hand and he was giving me that hard look, I said, you're an actor. You're still acting. You, I said, we're fighting tomorrow. You know what's going to happen. I'm going to hurt you. And then he kept staring at me as I walked off. And I said, keep looking at me. Uh, that, that's all. Uh, uh, you know, it, I think it shows that he's not, he's not, he's still not a fighter to, to, to the degree that the other guys are. Guys who've been through it, guys who've really blood, sweat, and tears, You're going to shake your guy's hand, and you're going to give him respect because you know he's been through the same stuff. It's like a brotherhood. You're going to go in there and try and kill each other, but you, you, get, you, have, you have that baseline respect. You know what I mean? So I, I, it's, it, it'll, he'll get that. It's, it's a maturing process. You know, He's a two-year guy. He'll, he'll learn.
Hey Mickey. This is probably uh, this is probably a hey, tough Mickey. <laughs> This is probably a tough question for you to answer, but I'm gonna ask it anyways. Uh, you know, you you go with a lot of UFC caliber guys, and you said, you know, even if you didn't get here now, you would have been in the UFC eventually. Do you think CM Punk should fight again? Or I mean, how's you how do you feel in the UFC? Because you know, you did get here and, and it was a pretty one sided fight. Just rolling with him in those two minutes. Do you think he should take another fight in the UFC or do you think it's probably in his best interest not to? I think he should take some time. Uh, I think there's still money to be made on him. He's still a big superstar. Um, so I, I think he will have another UFC fight. A lot of guys are like, nah, he doesn't belong here. You know, people, privilege doesn't uh, rub people uh, in a good way. Um, but I think he, he's kind of earned that privilege by being obviously a talented guy and something else. Um, I think he'll probably have another fight. I think he should really focus in, train for a little bit, but yeah, you know, get get a chance of retribution. And on the flip side for you, you know, you came in with obviously all this attention, you know, being CM Punk's first opponent. Um, where do you go from here in terms of that? I mean, obviously you want Sage Northcutt, you want to stay in the UFC, but I mean, there is going to, the, the pressure now kind of mounts on you to, you know, duplicate this kind of performance. Do you enjoy that? Do you look forward to that? <laughs> I love that. This this is what I want to do, man. Since I was 16, every decision I made in my life was towards being here. Um, you know, I saw the path when I found out Dana White was going to be at my first fight. Uh, I'm a thinker. I, you know, I, I, I saw the path, and that this is where I want to be. I want war with the best guys in the world. I want to climb. I want to be a UFC champion. Mickey, just a little off topic. Did you watch the main event, and what did you think about that that first round? I did watch the main event. Um, it, it was it, it was crazy. They both dropped each other. Um, I I've, I've really uh, I, I'm a, I'm I've on a personal level I've become a huge fan of uh, Overeem. He's 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 been a great guy to me all week, giving me some good advice. Um, so I you know I was disappointed to see him lose, but and that, that's a guy who I you know I've watched for forever and and I've admired. Uh, I think he's you know still one of the best. He's definitely one of the best, maybe the best striker, technically in the UFC. Um, so yeah. You know, I thought it was a great fight. Uh, I, I was excited. I was like, yo, we got to go watch that. Because I missed, uh, I was doing, like I was talking, doing like interviews and stuff for, for the co-main. So I needed to make sure I watched that one. I was really excited for that. It was crazy. Thanks. Take a couple more guys. Yes. Uh, you're from New Jersey. UFC 205 is coming up. Is that on your radar at all? Yeah. <laughs> I meant to say that. <laughs> well, here's your chance. I wanted to say, yeah, I want to fight in the garden, man. I'm a Jersey boy. That's my backyard. I want to fight at UFC 205 in the Garden against Super Sage Northcutt. And uh, from the very beginning, you took him down and you kind of controlled him. Was that always the plan? No. I, I really want to show my striking. My striking, you wouldn't even recognize my striking compared to my last fight. I pieced that dude up, uh, me, you know, back in February. So I really want to show that off. Um, and, you know, he just came in hot. He came in too hot. He came in too aggressive. So... I just let my training take over and knew I'd, I'd, I knew I'd beat him in e either spot. I knew it'd be better, so I just took him down. Yeah, man. My pleasure. Mickey, do you have, like, a, a real strong sense of, like, accomplishment after tonight? Or is this kind of, like, something that you knew you could beat this guy? You never really – I mean, you never really know what he's bringing to the octagon, but you're like, I'm going to beat this guy. Obviously, I'm going to gain a whole lot from it. But as a, as a fighter, do you feel, like, a really high sense of accomplishment based on, on you know, this whole punk thing? Um, it's a good question. Uh, yes and no. Uh, there, you know, uh, this, this fight was different. This, I, uh, I, I was fighting and I, I don't want to be disparaging, but I, I was fighting, you know, an, an amateur. I, I want, I, I, you know, and I, you know, so yeah, I want, I, I need to, I still, I a hundred percent need to prove myself still. I, that's why you know I, I want to. I'm excited to get going now. Now the real, now the real work, now the real fights. The real, you know, it's every fight's a fight. Um, he's training at Rufus Sport, great place. I, I, I do feel a sense of accomplishment. Sure, I, I came in there. I, I loved. I love seeing the crowd, all that stuff. But yeah, it's it's not like I, I don't feel like I beat, you know, uh, a great fighter. I beat a fighter, not a great fighter.
And did that have anything to do with kind of what, the message that you wanted to get across after the fight? Because it did seem like your tone maybe changed just a little bit, that you were a little bit more defensive to saying, like, I am here. Like, do you feel that, that kind of people, there's, a, there's a, a, a threat of potentially people kind of forgetting about you now that this punk thing is done? No, no. Not people know who I am because of this punk fight now. You know, I, right? I'm fighting on the main card, UFC 203. Everyone wants to see him. I'm the guy who kicked his ass. So, you know, I, I don't think people are going to forget about me. Uh, I think I fight Sage next. I'm going to beat him up, and then they're going to know me more. And I'm going to beat up the next guy and the next guy. I, you know, I, the only reason I've wanted to fight CM Punk, the guy who I said is not a, you know, he's, he's a rudimentary fighter. He's early in his career. I, uh, I said that just to get here. This is where I want to be. I want to be in the UFC. Now I get going with the UFC killers. I can prove myself. I do want to prove myself. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah bro. Over here, Mickey. We're going to take two more. One here and then one of the gentlemen at the end. Yeah. Uh, we asked Punk about it. You guys had a long embrace kind of afterwards. He came to you. We saw him uh, talking in your ear. Uh, he told us what he said, but I'm curious from your perspective uh, what you thought. He said, o always feel you belong. I, I, I was pretty vocal about feeling like I didn't belong on the, I was checking if it was behind me, on the UFC poster. Uh, Uriah Faber and Jimmy Rivera fought before me. Those are two veterans. You know, I'm, a, I'm an MMA purist, man. I'm a, I've been a fan forever. Uh, I, I respect the, the veterans in the game, and I think they're more deserving of the spot. Between me and Punk before tonight, we had to combine two fights. I was 2-0, he was 0-0. It's kind of, we of a weird thing. Uh, but he, he was saying, you know, you, you belong. Always believe you belong. And, uh, you know, it was a motivational, positive message. It was yeah, nice of him. Um, Mickey, beforehand, you, uh, Mickey, beforehand, you uh, spoke about how Faber and Rivera were uh, before you guys, and uh, that you didn't belong on the main card, on the poster, and all that. After the fight with Punk, how do you, or where do you feel like you belong on the card? Um, I guess it'll depend on who I fight. I think I fight Super Sage Northcutt. That could be a main card fight. That's what I, I'd like to stay on the main card now. I got a little taste of it, and I really like it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it'll depend. That's not for me to say. Who's to say what anyone deserves or belongs or what? I, I just, you know, I'm here. I want war. I want fight. I want to get after it. My pleasure. Thank you, Mickey. Thank you. Hey, I just want to say something real quick. Uh, I don't know if, if anyone... Uh, my my a dude who's like a big brother to me, Billy D. Williams, he's kind of an unsung guy for me. Uh he I just I just want I want him to I just I felt I feel obligated to say something about him. He his uh nephew was hurt and sick this week. Uh was had bleeding in his brain and he, he stuck out with me all week and he's just like a foxhole guy. Billy, OG Billy D. Williams, just wanted to say his name. That's all. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the crab cakes. Yes, I will. Thank you. Steve Bay, congratulations. Obviously, an, an incredible fight this evening. Talk about the way you felt after that. It had to be a lot of emotion just with the atmosphere and then being such a back and forth fight. What was the emotion after the fight? <laughs> Thank God it's over. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, he hit a lot harder than I thought. You know, he put me on my ass. Um, but, you know, I, thought I was okay. You know, he put me down. You know, for a split second, I was like, whoa. But then I, you know, got me that front like I got out of it. I felt fine and then took over. Yeah. I needed it, actually. I was going to say, I mean, it was such a unique experience. You know, it didn't work out for Fabricio in Brazil earlier this year. It worked out great for you tonight. What, what was the experience? Was there added pressure? Was there anything different fighting in front of that crowd? Yeah, I would totally rather fight in Brazil. <laughs> a lot, it's a lot easier for me, honestly. I mean, just, you know, just, you know, I mean, literally, just the last, oh my God, four months has been crazy in my life, you know, and he thought I wasn't, he thought I was partying and all that, but unfortunately, I was training really, really hard for this fight because I didn't have a moment to stop. You know, I got married and all that, <clears throat> but um, yeah, man, uh, it's, I'm going to take some time to myself now and go on a honeymoon with my wife and, you know, treat her. And I know you want to enjoy this moment, and you deserve to, but of course, with champs, we always look to what's next. You know, Fabricio thought with a win, he deserved to fight you again. You've got Cain Velasquez, who said, you know, he looked great at, at 200. He'd like to fight you. 
What do you think should come next? And knowing that you want to take some time off, do you at least have a time frame when you'd like to come back? No, I, <clears throat> that's, you know, listen, whether you want me to fight, I'm going to fight, but I need, uh, I need I'm to take some time to myself. You know, everyone else gets all these year, year and a half. I mean, I, I just want a few months. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I mean, I didn't take any time off, which is fine, but right now, I don't, I don't care what they put in front of me. I'm, you know, I'm going to stay champ for a long time. Like I said, I'm going to be in still for a long time. Stipe, over to your left. Uh, congrats on the win, of course. Thanks, brother. <laughs> um, Obviously, the crowd was crazy tonight. How much of that did you hear on the way out? And 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 did you have to block it out? Did you soak it in? Because I mean, they were like this felt like you know a really crazy crowd tonight. Because the people are crazy. That's why I live here. That's how we do it. We don't mess around. We wait till next week and then I go tailgating in the Browns game. You're gonna see a lot more fights. I'm not gonna be in one of them, but you know, we watch them. Uh, that's how we do it, man. You know, like uh, like I said, I'd rather fight Brazil, man, because I was just, uh, you know, I got a little emotional in my head for a split second. You know, it was badass. You know, and then people were, you know, just, you know, just trying to mentally keep them out. But uh, it, it was, uh, I'm gonna remember this for the rest of my life. Stipe, uh so you, you get knocked down, and he's got you in a headlock. What were you thinking at that moment? And he had claimed that you had possibly tapped out and can you just comment on that and I don't, I don't know I tapped out when I have two hands on his hands on his that's what he said but yeah but yeah. I mean well he, he's also not feeling too good right now so um uh yeah uh I mean, were, yeah, you were, put, were you worried at that moment? No, honestly, I mean, it sucked. Like, no, listen, that that's terrible. You know, he could have, I mean, he could really hurt me. You know, he, he threw out harder than I thought. He kicked out harder than I thought. And, you know, that was my own fault. <clears throat> but, you know, I knew everything was coming. Listen, I trained for these situations. You know, he put me on my ass. I felt fine. You know, he got me in that front, front headlock, and I just kept scooting to my right, and he popped out. He didn't like it. And then, you know, he gave me gave me the opportunity to grab his leg. He fell to the ground. And then and when I got him on top of him, yeah, game over. Stipe, you were. Uh... You were kind of chasing him a little bit there. He was kind of, you know, resetting, moving away. Was there any frustration at all? Because you did have to kind of go after him a few times. I mean, you, you literally kind of ran after him. Was there any frustration in that moment of, of that particular game plan or, 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 you know, in his style of how he approached this fight? No, I mean, I, I knew exactly what he was doing. You know, <clears throat> he was slowing down. I would start catching him. and I knew eventually I was going to get him. You know, and uh, fortunately he got too close. I got that takedown, you know, and that's all she wrote. It's probably impossible to, to kind of quantize this, but I'm going to ask you anyways. Um, what was the better feeling, you know, winning the title in Brazil or, or feeling what you felt tonight in, in front of your hometown crowd? OHIO, baby. That's all I got to say. Stipe, you had talked leading up to this fight continuously that, you know, you didn't – fighting in Cleveland, you were not going to let that affect you. But now after the fact um, – how, how did you handle the emotions? Was it was it difficult going through all that? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> right when it started, yeah, because I knew I was going to be Ticketmaster for about two months. And I was trying to get tickets. So uh, my wife took care of that, and she pretty much shut down everyone that came in. So thank God. That's why I love her. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was tough. You know, just people just trying to figure out where, where I'm staying, this and that, wanting you know, appearances and stuff. And, you know, like, it is what it is, man. But uh, I, I'd love to hear. I, mean, I would love to fight here again, you know. You know, now it won't be as bad. I'd be more, you know. I, I was definitely nervous. Like, every fight, you should be nervous for a fight. But I... You know, I was just living, living life, man. Love it, man. Listen, like I said, I'm keeping this belt for a long time. Any additional questions? The guy back right there, a good-looking man with the crazy shoes, probably. <laughs> you got that? You got that. Thank you. Thank you. Good one. All right. <laughs> I'm just wondering if you heard what he said in the cage about the tap, and do you feel like that was, I don't know, for lack of a better word, unsportsmanlike, to try to make an excuse, try to take your moment right after you won. Clearly, it seems like you did not tap. I, I didn't. Thank you. Thank you for having my back for a change. It's nice. I'm, just, change. I'm just joking. I'm, just, I'm giving you a hard time. Come on, hard time. Uh, No, yeah. <clears throat> Listen, man, I, I remember I was in the back getting my, you know, getting signed, signed my check and all that good stuff, and uh, I heard booze, and I asked him what, you know, what were they booing about because I knew he was talking, and they uh, told me that he said I tapped out, and I they, uh, don't remember tapping out. I just remember punching him in the face repeatedly until he was unconscious. And just to be clear, if they do come to you and say, because I don't know if you heard, $2.6 million gate, sellout. I mean, this was a, a huge night. That's how we do in Cleveland. So if they come to you and say, look, we want to do Kane versus you here in Cleveland, would you really say no to that? No, I want to say no. I mean, I well, you said I you'd fight. rather. You I, said well, I'd rather fight, of course. But I mean, listen, man, I'm not going to pick and choose who I fight and where I'm going to fight. If they tell me I'm going to fight in Saturday, I'll fight in Saturday, and I don't really don't care. I mean, whatever you want me to fight, I'm going to fight. I mean, I'm the heavyweight champ of the world. Right. That's the reason. I'll fight anyone anywhere. I fought in front of 45,000 Brazilian people. And I fought in front of how many people here tonight? 18,000. Oh, really? 
18,000 people, almost 19,000 people, all, all for me. I'll do whatever they want me to do it. And just curious, given how proud you are of being from here and being humble, working class, when he was saying things like you've changed and your partying and your clothes have changed, did that, you know, did that dig? Was that <laughs> did a he come off the plane in like a fur coat or something? <laughs> I don't know. Didn't he? I don't know. I, I mean, I, listen, I'm wearing a black T-shirt. I don't know how right. I've changed. No, but did that bother you a little more? Like, No. I mean, whatever, whatever he wants to think, man. Listen, you don't know how hard I'm training. Like, this, this summer was probably the hottest summer ever I've ever been in Cleveland. The humidity and the heat was probably 90 degrees every day for probably a month and a half straight. And I trained. Did five, five, six, six rounds in a row, five-minute rounds, nonstop. Because I knew what the end result was going to be. So he could sit there and say I was partying. But, yeah, when I was partying, guess what? I was also training. I could have a few cocktails. I'm a big boy. <laughs> and one last quick one. I know you were preparing, but did you happen to catch a glimpse of the madness in the co-main event? And <laughs> for Doom was saying something to you after when John was interviewing you. What's your take on everything that's happened afterwards with Verdum? Uh, no, I mean, you know, Verdum said, hey, you should fight me next. And I said, okay, you know, whatever they want me to do, you know. He's a nice guy. But I, I just heard a little bit about it. I heard some, the one coach said something. He pushed, kicked him. So I mean, it's, not good, it's not good. It's a good push kick. I, I felt it before. So I felt bad for that coach. But, I mean, he probably said something he should have said. I mean, I mean, be classy about it. But Stipe, when you jumped out of the ring in Brazil and then you jump on top of the ring and you start doing your OH, is that something you think about? Did you think about That one I did think about. I did your, think about that one. The OH? I O. Yep. <laughs> That's all I think about, man. What did you think about that? Today, leading now, up to the minute, the minute they announced the fight, I was like, what, what's something cool? And I was like, knock this dude out. It would be fun to do. And uh, that was it. And I was like, that'd be fun. And look at that. They had 19,000 people going I.O. They didn't do it at the end because they were screaming, but it was fun. Thank you. Thanks, Jan. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for doing that, guys. Good job. Guys, have a joy tonight. Thank you, guys. And Ohio State won. Ohio State won. Oh, I did. Jeez, don't even talk about it. I was having a heart attack before the fight. It's a little preoccupied. <laughs> Just me? Just you. Um, <laughs> the important guy. <laughs> okay. Well, Fabricio, uh, kind of start to finish, this was kind of a, a weird fight. Uh, just talk about how you felt about the entire performance as a whole and how you did tonight. Yeah, I mean, for sure, uh, when you win, when you have a win, you, everything is happy, you know? I'm very happy, my team, everybody happy, because when you lose, it's everybody is terrible in your life. And uh, I think it's a good job. I, I did a good job, good fight. You know, very smart fight because it's very important the victory. But I, I just saw Stimbio teach now. I say for him the rematch. He said okay because uh, I think he's loved me. You know. <laughs> no, it's good, man. I, I think he, I did everything. Just the first kick. I don't ask to my 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 coach. I don't say nothing but the the flight kick. I did it. This is number three. I did it in Pride in 2006 versus Overing, and uh, after then in Brazil in Jungle Fight, I did it versus uh, Gonzaga. You know Gonzaga, yes? And this is number three. You know the this is my special one. I just saw the the, the kick I did. Let's see, it's good. Some confusion in the first round when it looked like Travis had a hand injury. You continued to fight on. The referee stepped in. You looked pretty upset at, at kind of how things unfolded. What what were you thinking as that happened? Uh, I mean, the, the heifer is there for the stop or keep going the fight, you know? The ref stopped the fight. I mean, stop, that's it. I respect the ref, that's it. But he don't stop the fight. Sometimes it happens. I mean, I mean um, commentary all the time. I'm commentating UFC Network. I saw a lot of times when the, the guy say the finger in the eyes, and the, the guy don't stop the fight, keep going. The ref don't say nothing, I keep going the fight. Why did he stop the fight, you know? It's not my, it's not my job. I just did my job, just fight, you know. And I just give one punch. I, maybe I, I give him more, but I say, okay, because I see he turned his his body, I stop after then. 
And uh, when he's when the referee stop the fight, he says stop. I stop. You know that's it. But I saw his bone, man. I saw his break the, his, his finger, and I saw his bone. I don't know why the athletic commission don't stop the fight. I don't understand, but it's okay, man. It's good. And talk about after the fight, of course, kind of a, a weird scene there. You and Edmund Tarverdian looked like you threw a kick at him. Uh, what exactly happened there? Explain mm. what happened. And, and do you have any regrets that you, you, you assaulted a coach? In the no, no, no. His coach come, uh, everybody boo, you know. Everybody say, ooh. You know why? Because this is a uh, Steve teach house. When the Steve teach go to Brazil, everybody boo him too. I think the guy say, go the same thing. I say, okay, no problem. And uh, this coach, uh, the, the coach coming, I don't know his name. Edmund Ah, okay. And uh, he say, hey, shut up your mouth, son of a bitch. I say, what? Como é que é, filha da puta? Huh? Ah, motherfucker. Yes, he say motherfucker. <laughs> he say motherfucker. <laughs> he say motherfucker. Sir, shut up your mouth, motherfucker. I say, what? And then, no, no, no. You, you say for me, it's okay, but not for my mom, you know? And uh, I just keep the distance. I don't, I don't got the kick, man. I just keep the distance because, you know, he's a boxing uh, coach. And I, I see in his eyes he want to he, he wanna punch my face, you know? And I just keep the distance. That's it. Uh, but he comes first. He says a lot of things, bad things, you know? And my mom say never say bad things for no, nobody. I say okay, but he start. Uh, Fabricio to your left. Uh, congrats on the victory. I am curious. You know, you've always been such a respectful guy throughout your career. Things seem to get personal this week with Travis. What what led to that? What what kind of started those bad feelings this week? For the what? For the last thing? For this for this fight, you 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 guys seem to be really like at each other's throats. It was seemed to get personal this week. What happened? Like what changed? Eu não entendi a pergunta, Bess. Ele falou que você é tão cara respeitoso, ah. porque mudou o cenário nessa semana, porque vocês se insultaram tanto. Eu não sei, eu nunca começo, eu nunca começo a dizer muitas coisas, mas quando ele começa, eu não sei, eu não sei ficar quieto. Eu nunca sei, o cara diz algo, eu só digo, só ficar quieto. Não, 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 eu só respondo, you know? Just, quando ele diz algo, eu respondo, é isso. Mas eu acho que ele sabe muito mais confiante para essa luta, e ele diz muitas coisas. E eu acho que ele I beat him again, you know. I just uh, did my job, good fight. And I, th I think uh, uh, it's a decision, but very good fight, you know. The, the force kick, I, I love the force kick. It's good. I think uh, the, the performance tonight for me, I think 50,000 and more, you know. <laughs> um, you obviously, you know, we know you want the title shot. Uh, everything that happened after the fight with the coach and the, the crowd, did that take anything away from the victory for you, just the, that all happening after the fight? I don't think you know. He said, yeah. Yes, man. You know, uh, I, I think I deserve the, the title shot again because I, I, I have a v six victory before, six victory uh, before the Steve Teach fight in Brazil. I think... Uh, it's a good idea. I think uh, everybody want to see me still my teacher again, you know, because the, the, first, the first fight with him, I just fought two minutes. I don't feel in fight very good. It's no excuse. He's got a very good punch, but I, I think it's, it's fair, man. I think the second UFC here, you see uh, it's full house. I think the second one here, I, I think it's a good idea. Me versus Timmy teach. I'm in the first rank. I'm the first one, you know. And uh, I think I deserve the, the title shot again. And last question, Cain Velasquez has also, you know, made this statement. What, you know, do you believe that, you know, you should get it in front of Cain because you beat Cain? Or, I mean, how do you feel about that? Because Cain believes he's number one. No, I'm, but the, the rank, the numbers there, I'm the, the number one, you know. Uh, I think Cain Velasquez, is, he come back, he beat uh, Travis Brown too, but... I before this fight, man. I before this fight, I have a six uh, win. Is uh, I'm win six fight. I think this is my my turn again because the, in Brazil, uh, I I told her again this is good fight with Stimio Teach. He got it. He got, he got a good punch. But uh, I'm the fourth one. It's normally you know the champion in the fourth of the rank. You know I think it's it's fair the the. Cleveland again. I want to fight in Cleveland because the guys boo me and I love this, man. <laughs> Fabricio, right here. Ah, okay. If you do fight Stipe again, what would you do differently? Ah, for sure, just the patient, you know? The first time I don't, I don't take a punch because 
uh, nobody know the because I have a I don't fight for one year before the stimulus fight because I have an injury. Um, I think the patient, you know, because it, in Brazil it's very special special uh, event. Forty five thousand in, in the stadium is good event, very huge event, and. Um, just patient, because I have a five rounds for a, a beat him. Yeah, I, I believe this, man. I believe I beat Steve Miotic the next one. You know, this is my idea. I have a good camp and a good strategy. Little patient, I beat him for sure. Because, you know, I, I, I mean, how about like trauma? 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 Because, uh, huh? Trauma. Trauma. Trauma? You understand? When I saw the f uh, fire truck in, in Los Angeles, I'm very scared, man. Yes, you know, when I, I saw the fire truck, wow, I'm, I still want you to come for me again. I said, no, please. And I, I don't want to more. You know, when you have a trauma, trauma, it's very important you, you go uh, for your trauma, you know, because I don't want to, because I love the firefighters, man. But, you know, but I don't want a trauma in my life, man. I want to finish my career and have a, you know, I, 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 for sure, this part finish when I beat him. When I beat him, I'm no more trauma. 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 <laughs> We're going to take two more, guys. Uh, oh. Hey, just one second. This is my, uh, my turn. Yeah. I'm waiting for 30 minutes. Sorry about that. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> if, I, if I heard you correctly, um, you thought he, he got in one good punch and maybe he thought it wasn't I mean, it was a lucky punch or whatever. Did you get, gain more respect for Stipe after the way he won tonight? Bad, I didn't get more respect for Stipe. Hey, man, Stipe Miotic is a very good champion. Man. This is the second victory. I, I think Stipe Miotic is a great fighter, you know. But um, I, I want to fight with him again. You know, this is my idea. I, I feel in, you know, he's... He's a nice guy, okay, but you know, just professional. I wanna, I wanna fight with him. Uh, you know, he he did a very good job today, man. Very good, you know. Uh, still uh, over in the punch, hit two times, knocked down him two times, and he come back again. I'm very happy for him because he's a, a hometown, how's it make a hometown. He's good for him, but I wanna see he me him here again. Imagine it's good event when I go in, everybody boo me again. This is good. You know? Uh, Fabrizio? Right, right here. Uh, do you feel like it was easier to fight your style uh, more so that there wasn't an emotional attachment from the uh, audience tonight in Cleveland? I don't think that's just got it, man. Do you feel like it was easier for you to fight your style knowing that there was no emotional attachment from Cleveland? Como se é fácil? Eu não entendi a pergunta, 100%. Não, assim, no Brasil, você lutou com a emoção. Ah. Você está emocionado, entendeu? Mas yes. aqui você lutou sem a responsabilidade. Ah, ok. Sim, yes, man. Um, no, I mean, in Brazil, for sure, imagine you fight in, in Brazil, in your country, for a uh, huge event, first time in, in the stadium. It's, it's good. For sure, I'm very emotional, because, you know, uh, I don't have a fight for one year. It's a lot of things, you know, a lot of things, small things happen before, but I don't like excuse. Excuse? Excuse before uh, when the guys beat you and you say, ah, I don't have a good camp, I have an injury. No, this is no good. Today, man, today I don't, I don't say for nobody, but I have an injury in my foot. I broke my foot. No, I broke, but what say, uh, Ali? Fracture. Fracture in my foot. I have it. I have everything. I go to the doctor, but I, I want to fight. I want to fight, you know. Two, two, uh, two hours before the, the fight, the doctor go to my room today. And they're giving the shot. I don't know. Injection. 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 They gave me for because I have a lot of pain in my foot, you know. And um, that's it, man. But I know I don't say nothing. I just want to fight, you know. And I fight because I, I know I'm the next one. I'm the next one. The, why have a rank? Why? Why have a rank? The, the champion, the first one, the second one. I'm the first one. I think I deserve this, you know. I mean, I mean, I know it started yesterday, man. I I, I just fight. I, I just fight for. Uh, 19 years, 19 years old, 19 years, no, 19, 19 years, you know, it's a lo long time, I'm almost 20 years. And uh, I have a oh, sorry. 39 years old, you know. Go ahead. Uh, real Go ahead. quick, um, you talked about the foot injury 
a while back ago. Um, how is it feeling after the fight tonight? Now I'm very I'm paying my food. Everything's paying my. But but when you win, is the is is good. You know I'm feeling good, man. Uh, I think it's good fight. You know uh, everybody boo for sure, but. And the four, I love the first kick, you know, the first kick, the flight kick, the flight kick, I, I love this, man. I'm feeling very well, very good. É, você começou a luta com um golpe inusitado e tentou aplicar outros estão sendo inusitados também. Isso faz parte da nova postura que você disse que adotaria ou foi alguma coisa específica para esse conto fundo? Não, eu, agora, agora meus meus coaches não vão falar nada agora, mas com certeza eles vão me xingar depois porque teve algumas coisas que não estavam nos planos, né? Foi da minha cabeça mesmo, foi no momento, porque eu estava feliz, né? E quando eu luto feliz eu tento fazer alguma coisa diferente, porque não é o normal. Então acho que sempre surpreende, acho que esse primeiro chute, o, a, a, eu chamo de voador né? No, no Rio de Janeiro em outros lugares chamam de voadeira o, o chute né? e, e, mas, mas eu não contei para eles eu não contei porque eu também não sabia o que ia fazer foi, na, foi no momento, foi de momento que eu fiz é o primeiro chute é. aí eu tava com esse negócio na cabeça que eu queria fazer aquela cambalhota e o chute também, que eu pensava que ia pegar o calcanhar no rosto dele, mas não saiu bem porque eu não treinei aquilo ali entendeu? e eu, eu falei pro, pro coach cobrinha eu falei que ia fazer, ele falou, não, faz isso. E o professor Rafael Cordeiro faz. <risos> então, eu fiquei na dúvida, então, ah, vou fazer, então. Eu vou pagar algumas flexões na academia, com certeza. <risos> do, do you think that the uh, fans were booing you, or do you think they were actually booing because in the second and third round, there really wasn't much action? You guys were just não, kind of like staying Não, the, the guys boo, you know why? Because his team will teach go to Brazil and everybody boo him in there. Yeah, but don't you think it was because they were cheering in the first round, but there was not as much um, action in the last two rounds as in the first round? And I think people were booing because they paid a lot of money and weren't seeing anything. No, I think the guys see a lot of things, man. I think it's, you know, it's very, it just when they go inside, you know, uh, the fight, because it's very hard because you say that because you outside. Uh, one day you go inside there yeah, and try and try. Uh, <laughs> it's very hard, man. It's it's tough, uh, it's tough uh, job, man. And uh, sometimes is I did that's my job. Very smart fight because I win. The, this win is very important because I my goal, my big goal is the tight shot again. I believe this, and uh, I think I I fight very well. No more question for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it? Okay. I'm joking, man. Sorry. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you.